Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth, and today we are going to be discussing on the introduction to chemistry. And this is the last bit of this topic. Uh, we are going to be looking at drying gases. And previously we looked at method of collecting gases. Uh, so today we are going to focus on uh, compounds used for drying gases and also do some questions. So in the previous lesson, when we were discussing on methods of collecting gases, we noticed there are some methods that the gases are not going to be collected dry, like over water method. You can go and check out that lesson. So sometimes it will require us to collect these gases and which are dry. So we have to actually dry them first before collecting them. That is what we are going to be discussing for today. So first, uh, drying gases, this is a process where moisture is removed from gas before collection. So we are removing moisture first of all before we collect. And it is usually done by passing the gas through some chemicals. These chemicals have a unique property of absorbing moisture. We actually refer to them as the liquescent substance. They are the liquescent in the sense that they absorb the moisture and form a solution. And they're usually mostly drying agents. And this drying agent must not react with the gases that are being dried. Otherwise, if they react to the gases being dried, they're not going to be dried at the end of the day. We are not going to get our final uh, gas. Examples are anhydrous calcium chloride, uh, concentrated sulfuric acid, and calcium oxide. We are going to come across this uh, in the course of the next topics as we prepare different gases up to form four, and we are going to be very specific. So anhydrous calcium chloride, concentrated sulfuric acid, and calcium oxide. We have to consider the different types of gases that are there. So we do have neutral gases, which is hydrogen and oxygen. These ones can use any of the drying agents. Hydrogen and oxygen can be dried with anhydrous calcium chloride. It can be dried by concentrated sulfuric acid, and it can be dried by calcium oxide. However, for the acidic gases, which is chlorine, hydrogen chloride, and sulfur dioxide, we cannot use the calcium oxide to dry it. This is because it's going to react with the calcium oxide to form a salt. Later on, we are going to discuss this in detail when we get to uh, Form 3. And then uh, some examples of alkaline gases are ammonia. And we cannot use concentrated sulfuric acid uh, with ammonia because it is going to react. This reaction is going to happen. And also, we cannot use anhydrous calcium chloride because it's going to form a complex. Although we are going to discuss this later as well in Form 3. But it is important for us to know that the properties of the gas that we are going to use is going to determine if it can be dried by specific drying agents or other drying agents. So the liquescent, uh, like we were discussing, is a process by which substances absorb moisture from the atmosphere and forms a solution. These substances are the liquescent in nature. The anhydrous calcium chloride the concentrated sulfuric acid and the calcium oxide. So let's look at this uh, way, this drying agents in details. So first of all, we are going to start with the concentrated sulfuric acid, which is in solution. So our, our gas is passed through uh, the solution containing sulfuric acid. You can see the tube needs to get inside the solution. And then the one that is picking the dried gas needs to be on the top. So we can use alternatively a conical flask as well. It is going to fun function in the same way. So you just put the tube that is delivering the gas and the one that is picking on the top, and then we have our acid. And you still use, get the same um, dry gas. So it's usually used uh, sulfuric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid is used to dry neutral acid the gases and also acidic gases because it doesn't react with them. And then the next method is anhydrous calcium chloride. 
it's usually put in a YouTube. This is called a YouTube. So since it is in solid state, it is put in the YouTube and you can see uh, the tubes get coming in with the gas, the gases passes through the anhydrous calcium chloride. So by the time it gets into this other end, it is already dry. It is usually used for drying neutral uh, gases. It can be used to dry acidic gases and some alkaline gases with uh, some a few exceptions, which we are going to discuss later on in Form 3. And then next we have our, our calcium oxide, which is also referred to as quicklime. So the gas comes from the bottom, it passes through the ox calcium oxide, and then it dries them, and then it's collected. This is in the case where the gas is lighter than air, but it not, doesn't have necessarily to be lighter than air, it can be heavier than air. So it's usually very suitable for neutral and alkaline gases. We do not want to dry uh, acidic gases with calcium oxide because it's going to react with the acid. Uh, and that's, that's the last, uh, the last uh, compound. Next, we are going to look at a few questions in regards to what we have just discussed. So uh, the diagram below shows the setup that we are used to prepare and collect oxygen gas. We have mentioned oxygen gas as being one of the gases that is neutral in nature. Study it and answer the questions that follow. So hydrogen peroxide reacts with manganese four oxide. So I know we have not yet looked at this process in detail, but uh, the questions are in relation to what we are going to discuss. So hydrogen peroxide decomposes to form oxygen. And you can see oxygen is being passed over concentrated sulfuric acid and it is collected by over water method. So the question is, identify two mistakes from the diagram which must be corrected for one to collect dry oxygen gas. So the first thing we noticed we said is the tube that is getting the gas should not be inside the acid. It needs to be the one that is delivering the gas should be inside, but the one that is getting the dry gas should be on the outer side. It shouldn't be dipped in the, in the solution. So that is one of the mistakes we notice in this setup. This tube should not be on the solution, uh, like this one. This one is supposed to be on the outer part. The second mistake we notice is that the gas is being collected by our water method. And our question says that we're supposed to collect a dry oxygen gas. If we collect it by our water method, then it is not dry. It's no longer dry. So we have to look for a method of collecting oxygen. Later on, we'll discuss and say, since oxygen has a density closer to air, we can use syringe instead as an alternative. But we will come to that uh, in air and combustion. So those are the two mistakes. I hope you have been able to understand how we dry gases. We are going to talk about these methods later on as well. So make sure you're able to remember and also check out the different ways of collecting these gases. So this brings us to the end of this topic. Uh, I hope you have been able to learn. So I'll see you as we start uh, from two work. See you.